This year, one of the most powerful men in the world, President of the USA, Barack Obama, gave a moving speech from this small bridge in America. Our march is not yet finished, but we're getting closer. And over the next two weeks, I'll tell you why. I'll be following in the footsteps of one of my heroes, a man named Martin Luther King. 50 years ago, he led a march to make sure black Americans could have equal rights. And I'm going to walk the same route he took, all 54 miles of it. <laughs> I will eat the same food, sing the same songs, and find out why thousands of marchers chose to make that journey together. This is the walk that changed the world. My story begins not in America, but here, in my hometown of Wolverhampton. Growing up being mixed race, I became aware that I looked different to many of my friends, and some people would even make fun of this. When I was seven, I vividly remember how I felt, where I was, what I was doing when somebody insulted me about the colour of my skin. And I was really upset and I went home and told my family all about it. And it was only then that I realised it could ever actually be an issue. But I wanted to find out if it was any different for my sister Rufaro. So I'm meeting her at our family church that we've been coming to since we were young. So obviously there we can see mum, we can see dad. We're from the same parents, we're mixed race. And what does being mixed race mean to you? I felt really proud being mixed race, but I've realised growing up that that's not all I am. I had a really, really happy childhood. The one thing, despite having lots of friends, that I didn't necessarily fit into a particular group. What challenges did you have growing up? I felt many insecurities about my hair, about my nose, but now growing up, I think you need to realise that there's beauty in, in many different things. Growing up and feeling as though you don't fit in because of the way that you look can be tough. But if we'd grown up in America at one time, things would have been a lot harder. 60 years ago, America was divided. Being black stopped you from going to the same school, eating at the same table, and even using the same toilets as white people. And I've come back to one of my old schools to demonstrate how it must have felt to children at that time. So I've got a little bit of a task for you all. I'd like to come up and choose a t-shirt, either a white t-shirt or a black t-shirt. Off you go. If you're wearing a white t-shirt, I'd like you to move to this side of the classroom. And if you're in a black t-shirt, I'd like you to come to this side of the room. And how many of you wearing the black t-shirts have a friend wearing the white t-shirts? So how would that make you feel if I said, just because, of the colour that you're wearing, you couldn't have anything to do with one another. Unhappy, lonely, miserable. To us now, it's unbelievable that keeping people apart based on the colour of their skin actually happened. But incredibly, this went on in parts of America, right up to the 1960s. Unhappy with this, black Americans protested, and this became known as the Civil Rights Movement. I don't have many heroes, but one of them is a man called Martin Luther King. And the reason he's my hero is because of his courage. He stood up and he helped change the world to make it a fairer place for everyone, no matter what they looked like. He wanted to make sure that black Americans had the same rights as white Americans. And that's why I'm traveling to one of the most important sites in all of Martin Luther King's fight for civil rights. Right here. This is the city of Selma, in the state of Alabama, USA. It's an American city like many others. It has a post office, it has a police station, and it was right here that a moment in history happened which would change the way black people would be treated in America. In 1965, black Americans were legally allowed to vote, but as many of them were poor and couldn't read or write, obstacles like literacy tests made registering to vote difficult. So Martin Luther King and other civil rights leaders chose Selma as the place to fight for more freedoms and wanted to do that with a protest march. And so the protesters decided to march from Selma to the state capitol building in Montgomery, 54 miles that way. They wanted to draw as much attention as possible to their fight, which is to make voting fair for everyone. 
And so they felt that in the important city of Montgomery, they could do just that. And that's why I'm here, to walk in the footsteps of the marchers and travel down the very same road they did. Join me as I go on a journey so close to my heart to discover how people stood up for what they believed in and how by simply putting one foot in front of the other, they changed history forever. 50 years since it happened, we'll be remembering the walk which changed the world. Selma to Alabama's capital of Montgomery finally gets underway. Keep on a talking, marching up to freedom land.